thank you for joining us in celebration of World Elephant Day. World Elephant Day is internationally celebrated every year on August 12th to raise awareness for elephant conservation. My name is Todd Montgomery, and I've been a part of the Elephant Sanctuary's education team since 2013. And I'm joining you today from the Sanctuary's Elephant Discovery Center located in downtown Hohenwald, Tennessee. The Elephant Sanctuary was founded in 1995 and now includes 3,060 acres of habitat for retired African savanna and Asian elephants, both of which are recognized as endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. A third species of elephant, the African forest elephant, is listed as critically endangered. I'm thrilled to be joined today by paleontologist Dr. Yan and park ranger Brandon Kenning, both of whom work at the Waco Mammoth National Monuments dig site in Waco, Texas. Together, we will celebrate World Elephant Day by exploring the elephants of the past and the connection they have to modern elephants like those we care for here in Tennessee. We are excited to answer a selection of questions sent in by our followers from around the country. Our hope is that you leave today's World Elephant Day chat with a better understanding of the history of ancient elephants and what the future holds for elephants in our current world. Without any further ado, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Yan and Brandon. So welcome, Dr. Yan. Thank you so much for joining us. We're, we're thrilled to have you with us. Uh, to get us started, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do at the Waco Mammoth National Monument? And also, if you don't mind, please explain to the viewers why this dig site in Waco is so significant. Thank you, Todd. And it's a pleasure to be here. Like you said, I'm Dr. Lindsay Yan, and I've been the paleontologist here at Waco Mammoth National Monument since 2020. And I'm so proud to be part of the National Park Service and have the opportunity to preserve and protect these amazing fossils of Columbian mammoths. So Waco Mammoth National Monument joined the National Park Service in 2015 as one of the world's most unique paleontological sites. So the site preserves the nation's first and so far only Columbian mammoth nursery herd, which is really dominated by females and their offspring. The site is one of only a few places in the world that you can go and see active excavations of mammoth fossils where those fossils are still in their original location. And what's even more amazing in my opinion is that we actually preserve an entire ecosystem here in Central Texas. So we've got camels and horses and bison, alligators and giant tortoises and birds. We've got all different kinds of animals. And it's my job as the first federal paleontologist at the site to protect and preserve this herd of mammoths and this tiny time slice that we've got that includes the life and death of all of these animals about 65,000 years ago. While we originally thought that these mammoths died during a flash flood, um, if we're gonna understand what happened in the past, we need to understand how they might've lived. And in order to do that, our Columbian mammoths, which are the bigger, more warm adapted cousin of the woolly mammoth, we have to go to their closest living ancestor, and that's the elephants. So despite ongoing genetic work, none of us have actually seen a live mammoth. So the next best thing we can do is go to one of those three modern species of elephants, two of which are preserved at the sanctuary. And recent droughts and harmful algae blooms like those seen in Zimbabwe and Botswana and all across the globe have severely impacted our modern elephants. And we're now looking for evidence of these different events within the fossil record to maybe try and figure out what happened. So our working hypothesis is that a severe drought likely led to the death of the animals at Waco Mammoth National Monument. But we still have a lot of research to do. And if you'd like to see some of our mammoth fossils and our tiny sliver of the place to see, our park guide, Brandon Kenning, is gonna bring you all into our dig shelter. So now we're going to be joined by uh, park guide Brandon uh, Kenning. Uh, Brandon, if you'd like to join us and uh, show us around your uh, your park, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Ranger Brandon, and I'm a park guide with the National Park Service here at Waco Mammoth National Monument. One of my primary responsibilities 
is guiding both on-site field trips to the park and virtual tours with students from across the country. I use this very iPad to get a paleontologist eye view of the fossils found inside our protected dig shelter. These fossils are what we consider in situ, which means that they are in place and found in the original location where they were first discovered over three decades ago. This climate controlled building is designed to protect these fossils from the extreme Texas heat, unpredictable flooding events, and from harmful UV rays from the sun. The fossils found in this building represent phase two of the excavation process here at Waco Mammoth National Monument. Phase one began with the initial discovery and excavation of the nursery herd and spanned from 1978 to 1991. Mammoth Q here was actually discovered by accident during phase one and shows researchers the importance of this site as there are many more fossils to discover here. Now looking at Mammoth Q, we notice that he is laying on his stomach. He also has these very large tusks that are about 11 feet long, and we know that it is a male mammoth by looking at this bone right here. This is actually his pelvis, and if we were to go up top and look at the pelvis looking down, we would notice it is in the shape of a circle, indicating that this is a male mammoth. Now as I walk over to the other mammoth, notice that this large deck that you see in front of me is pretty bare, but that is because we just installed it. In the near future, our paleontologist will use this site where she, her and her interns, volunteers, and graduate assistants will do active research here within the building. As you can see, the building is connected to a catwalk that is suspended from the ceiling and prevents any disruption as visitors walk through the dig shelter. Now, as I move over to Mammoth W, the first thing you will notice is her tusks. That is right. This is a female mammoth, and females did have tusks. Well, once again, how do we know it's a female? Follow it down on its back to its pelvis where we see that diamond shaped opening. Moving back up to her skull, we found her teeth. Here's her bottom jaw and here's her upper jaw. Very similar to modern day elephants. And then again, here's her tusks. One is still underneath the ground in the soil and the other one has been removed where it is currently sitting at Mayborn Museum here in Waco at Baylor University. Hopefully we can discover more about this animal as we research those tusks further. Now, even though these animals found here are long gone and considered extinct, we wanna use our resources and funding to protect and conserve these fossils, similar to how the elephant sanctuary protects and conserves extant elephants today. Thank you for joining me on this virtual tour of our dig shelter. And now I will turn it back to Todd and Dr. Yan. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brandon, for showing us this incredible scientific site. Uh, this takes us to the, the next and final portion of our, of our celebration. Now that we've gotten our uh, introductions and setting of the scene out of the way, we have questions uh, sent in from some of our, our supporters and friends from uh, around the country. Uh, Dr. Yan, our first question comes from Lisa, age 11, from Texas. And Lisa wants to know if mammoths are dinosaurs. Lisa, great question. Mammoths are prehistoric animals, but they're not dinosaurs. Mammoths, they're mammals, just like all of us and like the elephants. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, are reptiles, and they're represented today by their descendants, birds. Our second question comes from Emma in Ohio, who asks, did today's Asian elephants and African elephant species exist on Earth at the same time as mammoths. Indeed, African and Asian elephants lived at the same time as our mammoths, just in different regions and different habitats. Well, that brings me to, to my next question. This, this is from me. So this is from um, Todd in Tennessee. Uh, I've, heard the, I've heard it been said that mammoths were actually still around when uh, the great pyramids of Egypt were being built. Is this true? This is one of those fun questions that I get to answer. And the answer is likely. So most people think of mammoths as these really ancient creatures that died well before human construction. And while that's mostly true, a study published in 2021 suggests that mammoths on Wrangell Island, which is off the coast of Siberia, may have survived until about 4,000 years ago. Um, so this does suggest that the human built pyramids and mammoths lived at the same time, but always more research is needed. Well, thank you. That, that answers that. Um, our next question, 
We know that in today's world, wild elephants are found in parts of Asia and Africa. Where in modern day North America would mammoths have been found? So mammoth wise in North America, we had the woolly mammoth and the Colombian mammoth. They were both found in North America. The colder adapted woolly mammoths were really restricted to Alaska, Canada, and the northern part of the continental U.S. Our Colombian mammoths, these are the more warm adapted taxa, they were found throughout the continental United States, as well as into Mexico and even into Central America. So they were pretty widespread across North America. Fascinating. Um, our next question is uh, from Jane in California. Jane asked, what caused the extinction of mammoths? Jane, that is a really great question and it's a really complex question. So you would likely get different answers from different researchers. In my opinion, based on the research that we have today, the extinction of the Columbian and the woolly mammoths is likely due to a combination of climate change and human interactions. So as the ice age ended, the habitats were changing dramatically and food, food would become more scarce. Um, additionally, humans on the landscape would have been hunting these animals for food and tools and supplies for shelter. So I really do think it's this combination between the climate and human interactions. Great question, Jane, and a, a great answer, of course. Our next question is from Noah in Illinois. Noah asks, if climate change is a, is a significant factor in mammoths going extinct, is climate change affecting the elephants of today? Great question, Noah. And just like we're seeing in our rapid climate shifts during the Ice Age, we're seeing similar things happening in our modern climate with impacts to temperature and rainfall and how strong or how frequent our severe weather events are. And these changes pose significant threats to elephants by altering their habitats. It affects the availability of their food and water, and it also increases human wildlife conflict, which becomes a major problem with the elephants. So it's essential that we address these climate change issues to ensure that the elephants and other wildlife survive uh, into the future. And as a paleontologist, I'm also trying to understand if some of these modern climate issues like drought or harmful algae blooms might have played a role in the death of these mammoths here at Waco Mammoth National Monument. Well, it's very interesting, interesting to hear that the mammoths of yesteryear potentially encountered some of the same problems that elephants face today. The Elephant Sanctuary works with elephants here in Hohenwald, Tennessee, but we also have international partners that are doing work to help elephant populations. One of these groups is Elephants Without Borders based in Botswana. They recently shared information about uh, the current drought there causing elephant numbers to decrease. In your professional opinion, Dr. Yan, what can viewers of this video do to help prevent today's elephant populations from going extinct? That is one of those things is what can we as an average citizen do to make a difference? And really the big things that we're worried about are can you reduce your ecological footprint or your carbon footprint and overall just minimize how many fossil fuels you're using in your life and there are some very simple actions that we can take we can try and use fewer single-use plastics and even our grocery bags try and remember to bring reusable grocery bags or ask for paper when you're at the checkout well, we certainly agree. And in addition to this, we at the Elephant Sanctuary always recommend to people, use your voice. We can all help elephants by raising awareness about them. And we can do this by simply talking about elephants with your, your friends and your local communities, sharing your excitement, getting other people excited about elephants can go a long way in securing their future. Last but certainly not least, our education team at the Sanctuary loves to highlight potential career opportunities in um, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, such as becoming a sanctuary caregiver or a veterinarian or a wildlife researcher, or in this case, a paleontologist. Uh, Dr. Yan, can you share with us what inspired you uh, to 
become a paleontologist and what steps can one take to pursue a career in paleontology? Absolutely. First, though, I just wanted to say that I'm really excited to be here and to be able to talk about elephants. It's not something that I thought I'd have the opportunity to do. So that's an amazing thing for me. But I kind of started down this path when I was eight years old. I told my elementary school guidance counselor that I was going to be a paleontologist. So her response, and this would have been in the early 1990s, was that women weren't geologists and women weren't paleontologists. So I lived in very rural Virginia and I just went home in tears and told my parents. And it was at that point that I told him I was going to get my PhD in paleontology. So I'm not exactly sure what started me down this path. And I don't even know how I knew what a PhD was. But one of my earliest memories is standing in the Smithsonian, staring up at the huge African elephant and being amazed by the just giant Ice Age animals that were on display there. And while museum specimens like this do have problematic pasts, I think it was instrumental in guiding me towards my dream. I now have the amazing pleasure of being the first paleontologist at Waco Mammoth National Monument. I never imagined I would be in the National Park Service, but I love my job. My work revolves around these giant proboscideans and just understanding how they lived and died and what Central Texas would have looked like about 65,000 years ago. Ultimately, my advice is to follow your dreams no matter what people say. If those dreams happen to include paleontology, I recommend a strong background in both geology and biology as our work kind of straddles the boundary between the two of them. Wonderful advice. Thank you, Dr. Yan and Ranger Brandon for sharing your insights with us today. It's been a fascinating discussion about the connections between ancient elephants and modern elephants and what we can do to protect our planet's remaining elephant species from extinction. For more information about the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, our virtual and in-person education programs, our international partners, and our live Ellie cams, please visit www.elephants.com. You can also go to Waco Mammoth National Monuments website to see a virtual tour and learn more about their important work. We can all help elephants everywhere by sharing our enthusiasm and interest in these magnificent creatures, past and present. Dr. Yan, any final words? I would just like to say thank you, Todd, and thank you to everyone for your great questions and interest in both these amazing elephants and the amazing fossil record here at Waco Mammoth National Monument. The present really informs the past, and hopefully the past can strengthen the understanding of why it's so important to preserve and protect the animals that we have today. So let's all work together to inspire the next generation to preserve and protect the world, including our amazing elephants and our fantastic mammoths. Well, goodbye everyone. Happy World Elephant Day and thank you for celebrating with us. <laughs>